Washington Grown is brought to you by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. And by Northwest Farm Credit Services, supporting agriculture and rural communities with reliable, consistent credit and financial services today and tomorrow. And by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Office of the State Aquaculture Coordinator, supporting the viability and vitality of Washington agriculture. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordson and welcome to Washington Grown. In the Evergreen State, we're surrounded by so much more than just green. Washington is home to a lot of colorful crops, foods, and of course, flowers. So in this episode, we're exploring the colorful side of Washington State. We'll take a tour of a tulip farm preparing for the Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. We grow cut flowers 52 weeks out of the year. Wow. And so we're in production in the greenhouses year round. Then I'm making a summertime marinated melon salad at Cochinito in Spokane. Watch out. Yeah, don't get me. Oh. Nope. <laughs> and Val is making colorful pasta with master pasta artist Linda Miller Nicholson. It's like really fresh Play-Doh. It's like being a little kid again, but with the consciousness of being a grown-up too. All this and more today on Washington Grown. Bon appetito! Bon appetito! There are no fingers in there. No either, fingers so in it, and they, and they still look green. <laughs> this is happy food right here. That is heaven on a fork. <laughs> look at that smile! <laughs> oh, I've never done Sweet, that before. Right? Got my hard hat on. Let's go. Okay. Today we're in Spokane at Cochinita, where the fresh ingredients of fine dining combined with a casual atmosphere. Here, the colorful food fits right in with the decor. We've probably been here a dozen times. There's so many options, it's hard to choose, so you just have to kind of pick and go. <laughs> I think it's not something you can find elsewhere in town. In this day and age where you know, social media and all that's so important, colors and food's a big deal. Co-owner Travis Dickinson keeps his restaurant vibrant and fun, both on the plate and off. It's really important to us, especially the visual on the tacos and things like that. Everything's got its own salsa that's selected for that thing. And we really do try and keep them vibrant and exciting looking. I mean, people eat with their eyes before I, their mouths. So. Lots of color. It's very vibrant. It makes you feel like, you know, you're supposed to be eating tacos and drinking margaritas. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like a good mix of like a family environment, but also kind of a nightlife-esque type of environment. You know, it gets busy. There's a line out the door a lot of nights, but it's a line that moves quickly. We try and approach people in line and make sure they've got a drink in their hand and they're happy and welcome, but it really does have a, a fun, casual atmosphere. Grab a margarita and hang out, watch downtown, watch the thoroughfare, watch pedestrians walking around. Very friendly to people of all ages. Relaxed, easy to have a great conversation, but plenty of action happening around you. Later in the show, Travis and I will make a colorful marinated melon salad. The super secret is once it sits in that bowl for a while and get all that nice melon and a uh, chili lime juice ah, in the bottom. There we that's go. That's a nice little margarita mixer. We've played oh. with that one in the oh. past too. Double duty. Double duty. I like get it. Get your dessert on. <laughs> Today, I'm here in Mount Vernon with the Youngquist family. Farming runs deep in their family with the current fourth and fifth generation farming the land. Your whole family is here. Yeah, I I love it. Or maybe not the whole family, but a big part of it, right? Yeah. So your fourth uh, generation. Four for me. Fifth generation. Five for him. That's so yeah. cool. Roger's son Riley has followed in his father's footsteps in the potato industry. He's hopeful his kids will do the same. And what do you guys think about potatoes? Really cool. I actually have some right here. What? <laughs> Look at that. Those are good looking potatoes. Do you like potato farming? Yes. Yeah, what do you like about it? Um, just getting your hands dirty. <laughs> See, there's a true farmer right there. Do you like potato farming? Yes. Yeah, do you like to get dirty? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> Next up, the family showed me their potato fields where they grow all different colors of potatoes from yellow to purple. So what kind of, what color is your favorite potato? Pink. Yes. Do you guys like the purple ones? Yeah. Yeah. And the yellow ones are delicious too, right? Yeah. 
Should we dig up some more? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's see what they look like. You like to get your hands dirty, huh? Wow, look at how beautiful those are. Look at that color. Yellow potatoes, I think, are ideal. Uh, mashed, mm -hmm. you know, with a steak or something. Uh, but then, you know, these red potatoes chopped up with the skins on, yes. right in a pan, you know, is a nice look to yeah. it, too. Uh, you know, they cook up, they hold their color after they've been cooked, and, uh, you know, look good on a plate, really. Yeah, so yellow and some red. What else? White, yellow, and red and purple. The whole rainbow. Pretty much, I yeah. love it that way. To Roger, each color of potato has its own unique characteristics. Well, the yellow ones, I mean, I think they have a, a, a more of a unique, people like to say buttery flavor, but mm -hmm. I mean, I think they're a little bit sweeter as well. And What about purple? Purple's fun. They're a little bit of a, I shouldn't say novelty, but they're a little bit of a novelty from the standpoint, I think uh, they use them to add to potato salad or something for color. What's your favorite kind of potato? Well, I like them all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably favor the yellow ones a little bit, but uh -huh. uh, you know, obviously the reds are kind of what uh, this area is known for. The potatoes in this field are going through what's called a skin set. That means the outside of the potato has to get thicker and tougher. On a red potato, for example, if you just dug one with vines on them, mm -hmm. you couldn't hardly dig them without the skin scuffing off. Okay. And you can tell these are kind of rubbing off just a yeah, touch, so they're, just, yeah. they're not quite there yet, but they're getting close. Yeah. What is it about this particular area that makes growing potatoes so great? Well, I think it's the weather. It's milder and not, not as hot, and the, the soil's uh, a little heavier, so it keeps the color. Growing potatoes, I mean, is, is kind of like okay, yeah. growing uh, a family. It's, you gotta, you know, keep an eye on it. Uh, mm -hmm. You gotta take care of it. You gotta be there every second of the way to um, make sure you're trying yeah. to, you know, do your best. It's an adventure, but it's a, it's a fun adventure for sure. I wouldn't uh, change it for the world. We've all heard about painting on a canvas or making a sculpture out of clay. But how about creating art using fresh vegetables and herbs? I'm headed over to Seattle to create a rainbow of pasta with Linda Miller Nicholson and learn about her career as a pasta artist. I have been making pasta my entire life. Several years ago, my son went through a picky phase. So I thought, why not take something that I already have um, a big skill set built up and just add the vegetables to that in a fun and whimsical way. It just turns out that you can make a plethora of all of these beautiful things from vegetables, herbs, and superfoods. I mean, yes. if you look to the earth for color, which is where I look to mm -hmm. first, right. it's amazing what you actually will find. Natural palette. Yes, exactly. <laughs> People are always like, blue? How yes. is blue natural? Yes. Yes. Well, it comes from these flowers called the butterfly pea flowers. Okay. So I'm really excited today that we're going to be able to, to work with some, maybe some collards that comes from a farm that is literally just down the road. So oh. essentially the color of the green that you see here is the color of the, the resulting pasta dough. So right. we're going to do the magic part here which is just to puree the collards oh, with all right. the eggs in the blender. It smells so good. Doesn't it? You can really smell the You can smell collard. the health. Oh, that feels good. really good. Doesn't it feel good. nice and soft? Yes. There's something very therapeutic about it. Working out your feelings, your aggression. <laughs> it's like really fresh Play-Doh. It's like being a little kid again, mm -hmm. but with the consciousness of being a grown-up too. Absolutely. Along with our collard green dough, we're also using some yellow turmeric dough to create beautiful stripes. First, we sheet and laminate the pasta, and then Linda cuts the green dough into strips and lays them on top of the yellow dough. Okay. So I'm gonna feed this into the pasta machine here, and then you're gonna kinda help me catch it out right. the other side, okay? So now, where can people find you and learn more about you or take your classes? Um, I am probably the most active on Instagram just because it's easiest. It's such a visual medium, you know, but I, I do have some tutorials on YouTube and then in terms of actually learning how to make all of this pasta, I have a, um, a book called Pasta Pretty Please that's just out, well, six months ago. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna nest an wow. egg yolk right in the center of this. So I'm just kind of piping this high enough that when I put the egg yolk in there, it stays in its little nest. Wow. We're oh, gonna okay. close and seal 
this full one. Okay. And then I'm gonna cut this one as a circle. All right. The egg almost becomes the sauce. I like oh, to serve it in a little bit of a brown butter sage that sauce. Sounds but the good. egg kind of oozes out in this golden river of deliciousness. Wow, that's delicious. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up, I'm making a summertime marinated melon salad at Cochinito in Spokane. Watch out. Yeah, I'm gonna get me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest trying out Tammy's tricolor caprese salad. We're back at Cochinito in Spokane. Here, fine dining and street food mix to create a unique experience fit for the whole family. Just a very comfortable location. Very friendly to people of all ages. Lots of fun, relaxed, easy to have a great conversation, but plenty of action happening around you. I think it's not something you can find elsewhere in town. We're kind of an eclectic, chef-driven taco shop, I say. Co-owner Travis Dickinson worked as a chef in fine dining restaurants and wanted to create something a little more accessible for people to try. We got a little tired of working at restaurants that our friends and family couldn't afford to come eat at more than once a year. Right. So anybody from business lunches to small families can come in and hang out and have something fun. The best part about this is you can get some really high quality food quickly. There's so many options it's hard to choose so you just have to kind of pick and go. <laughs> You can definitely tell that everything's fresh made. Food-wise, it's all made from scratch stuff. A lot of the things that we were doing in fine dining as far as quality of sourcing, you know, local produce, local ingredients, local growers. It's almost every taco is a little composed plate in itself, so you can really kind of run through the menu. Instead of a $44 plate, it's on right. a you know, $4 little taco. So. I love that. One of our favorite spots to come when um, we're going someplace downtown and just want to get a quick bite to eat that's still really good. Definitely a culinary destination in downtown. Hey, what are you and I going to make? So we're going to do a marinated melon salad. Nice little refreshing summertime Delicious. dish. Delicious. And... Delicious. Can't wait. <laughs> Excellent. You could do honeydew, cantaloupe, watermelon. We're going to do cantaloupe and watermelon today. Um, it's done in a little chili lime seasoning. Yeah, fresh, good, summery. Yes. Okay, right. well, let's do well, it. Let's what do we need it to together. do first? Well, we're going to cut our melons, and really any shape works. For plating purposes, we do kind of a fun little, like, long oblique cut. Yeah, it really does make kind of a neat salad. It's yeah. such an easy thing for, like, summertime barbecues and things. Yeah. And, you know, if you wanted to juice a couple of limes on there, okay. maybe, like, three of those three segments, of these? that'd okay. be great. And the fun thing about melon, too, is you can kind of do this a day ahead, and it really holds up in the fridge, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit to where maybe sure. just throwing in the herbs and things day of, last minute, so they don't wilt in there, but one of the few Watch times... Watch out. Yeah. I'm going to squirt you. Oh. Like I said, just kind of enough to coat it around in there. Yeah. We'll give it a good toss in that. Next, we add some chili lime seasoning and start to chop up some of the fresh picked basil and mint. You can play with this too. We've done cilantro in the past. We've mm -hmm. done Thai basil. Mm -hmm. um, but this combination works That's really good, especially so good. mint and watermelon, sort of that classic combination. What is this here that you have? Uh, those are just some local microgreens that we use for garnish on top. Oh, okay. So there's a micro cilantro and then a nice little uh, purple radish Ooh, mix in there. I see that. What are some of the other things that you like to do with like summertime colorful oh. fruits and veggies? We go pretty crazy with a uh, succotash here during the summertime. Succotash. So we get all those cool <laughs> local squashes, yeah. corn, peppers, we can throw tomatoes in there. It's a great way to use you know, the whole abundance of the season in one dish. Right. So if you want to give that guy a little stir, I'll start getting our plate ready here. You have some candied Pepitas? Candy pepitas, yeah. We take pepitas, we toss them in a syrup of uh, glucose syrup, a little water, some carbonado sugar, salt and seasonings, and then just bake them off. Nice. You can always find an alternative at the store. Mm -hmm. I mean, candy walnuts or pecans, things like that work pretty well. Yeah. You make a little yeah, extra a and keep them in a Tupperware. There's a kick yeah. in there. There's that cayenne pepper in there. It'll get you. It plays That's well good. with some of the seasoning on here. So cotija cheese on there. You could also do feta. Then the, uh, the candy pumpkin seeds we're talking about on there for mm -hmm. a bit of crunch. We've got those nice little microgreens just for a little pop of color pretty quick and easy and that's beautiful yeah. that was really easy so yeah. now we get to that's taste it there we go that's the best part of my job i have a fork for you all right ladies first thank you gotta get mm. a little piece of everything mm -mm -mm. There. Mm -mm. i like how works, tangy though. it is yeah especially on those hot summer mm -hmm. days that lime kind of keeps you going. The super secret is once it sits in that bowl for a while and get all that nice melon and a uh, chili lime juice ah, in the bottom. There we that's go. That's a nice little margarita mixer. We've played oh. with that one in the past too. Double duty. Double duty. I like get it. Get your dessert on. <laughs> that's perfect. Happy summertime. Mm -hmm. mm. 
To get the recipe for Cochinito's marinated melon salad, visit wagrone.com. Have you ever looked down at your meal and noticed everything on the plate was brown? I know I have. While brown meals are sometimes difficult to avoid, eating the rainbow, or a diet rich in a variety of different colors, is a really powerful weapon in our fight against chronic disease. In fact, many studies have established that people who incorporate many colors into their diet by consuming fruits and vegetables have a lower risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. Not only are they a good source of fiber, vitamins, and minerals, but plants also contain thousands of naturally occurring compounds known as phytochemicals. These powerful compounds are classified as antioxidants, which protect our cells and tissue from damage by regenerating and protecting essential nutrients in our body, as well as neutralize cancer-causing compounds known as carcinogens. While modern science hasn't explained all the benefits of phytochemicals yet, what we do know is that consuming a wider variety of colorful fruits and vegetables maximizes all their amazing health benefits. So don't be afraid to mix it up and try all the red, yellow, purple, and orange veggies you can find at your local Washington market, knowing it will help your chances at living a longer, happier life. Coming up, I'm taking a tour of a tulip growing facility in the Skagit Valley. We grow cut flowers 52 weeks out of the year. Wow. And so we're in production in the greenhouses year round. Hey, let's go. Today we're visiting the open range food truck where fresh food and color are one and the same. For owner Bill and his team, making high quality food on the go is no problem. I cowboyed for a living before this, okay. so it all just kind of went together. It all fit, that's yep. who Bill is, huh? That's <laughs> Cowboy on the range. With our truck especially, you know, we're fast, we're good, and it's just amazing fresh product every time. Everything is from scratch. Okay. So we try to stay as fresh as we can. We try to make it innovative. We don't mess around. He puts in everything he has to it, so it usually turns out pretty dang good. Today, we're trying out a salmon sandwich made with a very special ingredient, rose petals. I never would have thought about utilizing roses on a salmon sandwich, so, so why that? Color. For me, food is about color, texture, and flavor. This is a mouthful of a sandwich right here. Cheers. Cheers. This is fresh. This is great. You guys got yourself a winner right here. Thank you. So when you get a plate of food, what's the first thing you notice before you even touch it or anything? Oh, the way it looks. I don't want to eat something bland. I want it to look interesting. It's more appealing to eat. It gives me the feeling that it's healthier. Do you enjoy a salmon? Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad. So why don't you try this okay. salmon? Take a bite. And let's okay. see what you think. Look at that. That's a good bite. Glorious. That's really good. Just flaky, delicious salmon. It's all there. It's like the whole rainbow. Just a fresh herb salmon flavor explosion. I'd uh, order two or three. Yeah. <laughs> so you finish that half and then you can order the other okay, half. Yeah, that's, that's my plan. <laughs> Every April, visitors from across the country journey to the Skagit Valley for the annual Tulip Festival. Today I'm visiting the Washington Bulb Company to meet with sixth generation tulip bulb grower Leo Rosen and learn how they're able to grow and sell flowers year round. Well basically we grow tulips, iris, lilies, we grow cut flowers 52 weeks out of the year. Wow. And so we're in production in the greenhouses year round. Leo explained that their high tech glass greenhouses are the reason why they're able to grow over 30 million tulips a year. In these greenhouses, we have lilies growing. Yeah. You can see we overhead water here, but at a certain point, we've got drip tape. No, I see, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's a pretty efficient type of irrigation, but then we keep the foliage dry. And that's one of the things, and when you have a dense production like this, you want to try to keep the air moving and keep the moisture off the plant so you control diseases. Next on my tour is a cooler where they're using a technique called forcing. Leo said this is how they're able to grow flowers year round. So these tulips were planted actually in January. Okay. And you start them at a certain temperature, then they come into a rooting room when we, at about 45 degrees and we start lowering the temperature till we get them at a stage where we want them. Uh huh. Now they're fro it's frozen right now. This is 30 oh. degrees, so they're frozen. They're, they're, they're they held. They are frozen. They're right there, okay? Yeah. Now, these will go in the greenhouse anytime in the next two months, and then about 12 days later, we have flowers. That's crazy. 
After the tulips are picked, they're sent to processing, where their bulbs are cut off, then the flowers are bunched and wrapped. And then where will the flowers go? You know, either large grocery chains or wholesale yeah. distributors okay. throughout the country. Yeah. In addition to their fresh cut flowers, they also grow and sell bulbs. In fact, they're the largest tulip bulb grower in the country. These bulbs are being graded, different sizes. They'll go back out and go back and they, they will cure some more. Leo showed me the area where they cure and dry the bulbs. This is a volume of air that's being forced through here. So if you open this up, After we got out of the wind, I asked Leo why it's so crucial to cure the bulbs. When they come out of the, the field, they're, they're wet, so okay. not only dry, but they have to cure and go into dormancy, or when you ship them, you know, it's a live product. They'll continue to give off moisture and that type of thing, and, and, and you have problems. Okay. So, yeah, so they need to, makes sense. They need to, in fact, cure or ripen off yeah. a little bit. Yeah, got it. Why is this area so great for growing bulbs? We have this mild maritime climate. We don't get the extremes on either end. We don't get the real hot, we don't get the real cold. We get adequate rainfall at the right time. We don't get huge amounts. And then we certainly are in the Skagit Valley, this river valley that's probably one of the most productive um, on the West Coast, maybe in the world. Well, Leo, thank you so much for the tour. Seeing your giant facility really gives me more appreciation for the tulips I see in the store and the bulbs that I put in my garden. and. I just appreciate everything that you do. Well, Tomas and I are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane, and we're joined by Laurent Zarati. He is the chef and owner of Fleur de Sel Crepery, and he is our uh, master taster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much <laughs> yeah. for that qualification. Yeah, we're, we're very but it's happy It's great you're to here. see you both. Yeah. Me too. So we're featuring recipes from allrecipes.com, which is a very popular uh, website, recipe yeah. website. I use it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so today we're going to be talking about all the colorful uh, crops that are grown in Washington. What what the most beautiful uh, what our state can offer, you know, through the season when you think yeah. about it. We're gonna taste something that is more like summer-like, but it's so, you know, it's what yeah. you bring to your plate also, the colors of, of, the, of the season and uh, all the produce that we have in our and great state. Is, this is a summertime recipe. It's yeah. called Tammy's Tri-Color Caprese. Caprese? 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 Yeah. I like Caprese. Okay, and this is from Tammy J. And so it has yellow and red tomatoes in it. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Some basil, mm -hmm. I bet, some yes. balsamic vinegar. Oh, I cannot wait. Bring That's... on the summer, right? That's I what know. that dish That's screams, beautiful. huh? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to make it, and then we get to taste it. Great. <laughs> cannot wait. This looks beautiful. I know, it's so colorful. Yeah. It beautiful. is. Beautiful, look at that. And when something has that many colors on a plate, it's bound to be good, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and fresh. Yes. And I didn't oh. expect it to have like the, the big tomatoes. I guess I was thinking. Oh yeah, they're beef like, like, little, tomatoes. Yeah, you know? these yeah. are gorgeous. I gotta get a little everything here. I know, you gotta have the shallots, the balsamic. The mozzarella. The what do you think? I love it. For our mm. audience, uh, you know, when you have such a s simple dish, uh, mm -hmm. simple to make, mm -hmm. simple to, to buy, use the best. Use the best olive oil you can get, use the best salt, like fleur de sel, right. for example. Use the best balsamic uh, vinegar. You can always 
put a little bit of uh, balsamic glaze if you can make it, you know, a little bit right. of uh, balsamic vinegar with sugar, reduce it and uh, to a glaze. Uh, chop, you could chop the, the, the basil, you know, make basil pesto at the end of the summer. You don't know what to do with your basil. And this is, to me, this is a meal. It's a meal. Yeah, it's hearty. And especially it's in the summer. In the summer, you're, right. you're hot, you want to eat lighter. Show off yeah. your t the tomatoes that you've uh -huh. grown in your right. backyard. Exactly. And basil, exactly. I grow basil too. So, I mean, this is just, you know, if there's, if there's anything I've learned over the years on this show is that good food is simple food. It's very simple. Yeah. 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 And so some of the comments, uh, I mean, they all just love it. Uh, one uh, cool Nana says that uh, she, instead of using the shallots, she just sliced red onion very, yeah. very thinly. Uh, yeah. Onions, yeah. Did that. Uh, and then Marla says uh, she went to the farmer's market and bought some heirloom. Heirloom tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah. Definitely, yes. Well, whatever, all the most local, the better. Mm -hmm. And then a sassy old lady says that... Oh, uh, my mom wrote in? <laughs> <laughs> she did! <laughs> so did mine! Uh, she did the balsamic reduction oh, glaze, like we go. you were yes, mentioning. Exactly. So. Yep. Yep. To bring a little more sweetness mm. to it, but nice. right. tomatoes are sweet enough, they are beautiful, it's perfect, it's seasonal. It's a great dish, it. great simple, great dish. Well, thank you, Tammy. Thank Tammy J. Yeah, we're going to eat some more. Perfect. <laughs> To get the recipe for Tammy's tricolor caprese salad, visit wagrone.com. Whether you're walking through a field of tulips or enjoying those colorful potatoes, Washington farmers bring color into our lives and onto our plates. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. See you next time. <laughs>